All right, Reggie, go ahead. Let him go. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River traffic. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hey, we're over at uh, Henry Street in Gowanus, made up alongside the Light Tank Barge, Double Skin 309. Uh, we're heads and tails, and uh, it's 300 by 13 deep draft on the tug. I'd like to head over to IMTT Bayonne uh, number 9. Hi, I'm Tim, and this is Tim B at Sea. And we are leaving our, one of our lay berths over here in uh, in Gowanus. And I don't know if you can hear his voice on the radio or not, but if those that have been following along for a while might remember Reggie. Reggie is the tankerman on, or he's one of the tankermen on this barge. And uh, always good to see an old friend. And uh, so Reggie's on there. All right, Reggie, I'm going to try to roll the stern in. I'm so far up, I don't know that I'll be able to lift the bow up, but you let me know if anything starts to work over there, all right? Okay. So right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to crack the barge out a little bit by rolling in on the stern. And, uh, all right, cool. Now the problem that I have is that if this is the barge, and this is us. Normally we like to be back here, but we're made up because of because of the way the barge is. We're not as far back as I'd like to be. So the geometry doesn't make it so that we can pop the bow out as much as I'd like. Looks like it, in fact, it looks like it's stalling out right now. So I'm going to try to get a little bit more horsepower. Yeah, and I'm gaining on it just a little bit. But like I say, you have to take the geometry into effect into consideration to realize it. Alright, very good. Uh, Reggie, I'm going to start to come ahead, but uh, it's not, things aren't working exactly the way I want, so just watch my stern there and let me know if I start closing in. Alright, so I'm just going to slide nice and easy. You let me know if uh, things don't look good back there. So my problem is you say, why don't I just shoot ahead? When we're made up alongside, shooting ahead before the barge has any way will end up making us go to the left. Say again, Reggie? Sorry, it opened up the one. Oh, nice. Oh, that's great. So I, I have to be very care careful, if not cognizant, that the fact that until I get way on the barge, I'm going to be sliding over to the left all the time because I'm made up on the right side. Sorry, close it down. So one... All right, I'll see if I can roll it off a little bit. So let me know if the corner of the 40 starts to close up a little. All right, good deal. So right. Right now I'm trying to do a little bit of a walk. It's not really going to work that well because I can usually push towards the barge better on a walk than I can uh, 
pulling away from the barge. All right, I'm trying to gain a little bit up here up in the bow, and then I'm going to snap with that stern right around. All right, here we come. Stern's going to come off, hopefully. Stern coming up. Ha-ha! <laughs> Reggie's just like old times. Just like old times. Very quick. <laughs> All right, Stern, All right, here we go. So now I'm kind of pointed in the wrong direction, meaning I really want to be over towards the right at almost 90 degrees, but to keep that stern from falling in, I've got to come left a little bit to lift the stern off the other part. All right, I'll lift it off again. Then once I get by, I can crank it right around. All right, I'm good now. Very good. It takes about 20 seconds to load the rudder in the opposite direction, so that's why I started before Reggie said I was clear. All right, Reggie, we're good to go. Uh, hang on a second. Let me look at the clock. Let's call it uh, 0940, underway. 0940, underway. Cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Now we're making tracks. Check in with traffic. I've already done my initial. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River, go ahead. We are Oscar Mike. The dock that we're going into, we call it the hole. There's a dock like this and a T dock that's like this, and I gotta go in here like that. And right now, this is where I pray to God there's nobody at number eight, which is this one over here, that will buy me another 50 or 60 feet to get in around this, to get into the hole. If there is somebody there, we'll still do the job. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. And if that wasn't enough, there's already somebody in there, so we got, and they don't want to come out until the the tide is slack, so they're coming out on the slack tide means that I probably won't have a slack tide going in, but that's all right. They're probably loaded and I'm, pro and I'm light, so well, mostly light. Anyway. So we're doing almost six knots, 5.9 right now, and I start to slowly bring up the speed. And People ask about sometimes about when we make up, and you know what? If we weren't in such a hurry, I would have filmed us making up because uh, making up alongside is a little different. We put in something to the makeup called pinch, and that means that if the if the barge is like this, we don't make up like that. We make up like that, so we've got a an angle in between us. And um, I say like that, but in reality, what we're trying to do is keep the tugboat straight and the barge overlapped so that when we drive ahead if you have a perfect makeup when you get to the speed you want to go at you'll carry very little rudder to keep you going straight in other words the more that this is pinched over like this the more water go, uh, pulls the barge to the, to the right even though right we're on the on the right way side way pushing way it to the left so if you can balance those out perfectly you're good to go um, right now, we're doing seven knots, right, and I'm using right, I'm about, about five knots, uh, excuse me, I'm using about five degrees of rudder, of left rudder, so uh, I think we're pretty good. The, the pinch that we have for this is good. <laughs> there are some times that you'll, you'll make up to a parch, and you'll have to carry 10 or 20 degrees of rudder just to keep it going straight. But, but that whole thing is, it's, 
it's fluid. It's not a static formula. So in other words, it depends on the barge. It depends on how you're, how far up and back and forth you're made up on the barge, whether the barge is lighter loaded or partially loaded. All those things depend. And I don't really have a formula to give you. It's something that you kind of got to do over a while and you just judge. You say, okay, that pinch is going to work or that pinch isn't going to work. So just to reiterate, in case I didn't make that clear, if we made up the barge like this and we made up flat like this, the problem with that is that when we'd run, we'd all because we're pushing over here, the barge, the barge is putting resistance this way, and the tug is pushing this way, so it'd make us always veer off to the left. But because we have it cranked over, the 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 working bow of the barge, or in this case, the the actual stern of the barge, is over the center line of the bow of the tug, so. The resistance up here of the water coming through, hitting the skegs, is pulling the barge that way. And if you can balance it out just right, you're good to go. And uh, things are looking good for us. Yeah, the Chandra B, that's the Elk River. I was just getting ready to call you. Where are you bound for, Cap? I'm down, I'm about to Staten Island. Uh, you want me to hunt these greens and just keep it going? I'll stay out of your way. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'm going to be heading for the kills as well, but, uh, well, right now you're going to beat me, so keep doing that and I'll take your stern. Okay, Cap, I'll stay out of your way. Have a good one. Thank you, Cap. Happy New Year. All right. Very nice guy there. I woke up this morning and uh, the other watch had put had put this barge alongside a ship and we were waiting with it out at the anchorage. So I got up and I didn't really see what number barge it was or anything and I just waited and then I went, um, I see the tankerman out there so I go out there and I look and there's Reggie. I haven't seen Reggie in a long time so it's really fun to catch up with Reggie again. For those of you that are new to the channel, Reggie has been a deckhand with us for a long, long time and, uh, very fond of Reggie. He's done well and got promoted and now he's a tanker. descends upon New York and the rest of the world, um, a lot of us have a lot of different concerns for different things. Ver speaking very selfishly, I'm concerned only because uh, when I get off in a week, I'm supposed to fly to Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico has just implemented new rules that we have to uh, not only be vaccinated, but have uh, a test before we enter within 48 hours. And uh, that's usually not a problem. That's what I dealt with all last winter. But the uh, lines in New York are so long. Um, <laughs> like I say, it sounds very self-serving, and I apologize for that. But <laughs> I'm a 55-year-old guy. I'm kind of worried about this. So uh, I'm very healthy, and uh, uh, meaning you know I'm not sick at all, or I'm here on the tugboat, and being this you know being on the boat, we're very isolated here. So this is good. The problem is, if I get off the tug to go take a test and stand in line with people that think they have COVID for three to four hours in line in New York to get a test to prove that I don't have COVID, by the time I get that test, I may actually have gotten infected by standing in line. So I'm not, I'm not 
entering the debate of whether we should test or not test or mask or not mask or vaccinate or not. I'm not, not getting into any of that on here. I'm just saying that the very thing that they're doing to try to make things better are probably going to, for me personally, expose me more. But it is what it is. So, uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I hope all of you guys are safe. And uh, the good news is that, uh, well, I shouldn't say good news. Somebody very close to me, if uh, you guys follow my other channel, SV Paquita, I'll put a link in the description if you don't follow it. Anyway, if some of you follow my other channel, SV Paquita, you might have seen my friend Cristalida. And uh, unfortunately, she's been vaccinated, and uh, unfortunately, she's tested positive for COVID now. Well, the good news is that she has very little symptoms, and we're attributing that, hopefully, because of her vaccination state. So, oh, tough times. Man, I'm sure that I'm not alone in thinking that we had this almost beat. That's the way it goes. And there's somebody that I need to speak to. I don't know, I don't remember your name, but you've spoken a couple times in the comments, and you're a relatively new viewer, and that's why I don't remember your name. But I don't know if you're an audio technician or what the deal is, but you keep talking about me blowing out my microphone. So look, I've moved it farther away as you recommended. So uh, I'm trying to, trying to do better. I uh, thank you for that feedback. The last uh, video I put up, um, I, I was trying to embed the noise of the uh, engines. And... Uh, I did that, but I think I might have put it a little too high. So I think this next time, I'm, 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 you know, everything takes a while to figure out. Especially if you're a slow learner like me. So, so hopefully I'll uh, get it figured out so that you guys will be able to hear the engine noise that want to hear it. But it doesn't drown us out when we... I think what I did before was I had the engine, the, the levels right when we were at idle. The problem was when we hooked up the engines, they got a lot more, they got a lot louder outside. <laughs> So, in reading all your comments, which is something I uh, really enjoy, all you guys that comment, um, you should hopefully have seen that I try to respond to everybody, and uh, your comments are something that uh, really make me uh, feel connected to the channel and want to do more, and I, I, I appreciate that a lot. Somebody had asked if I could do a video on the camera equipment that I use. And I was, I, I didn't, I, after I pressed send, I, I realized that it kind of sounded like I was a little snobby to the guy saying, yeah, I don't really want to do that. Or that, that my, I don't think my audience really cares about cameras or something. I don't know, I said something really stupid and I regret that. Um, I do stand by thinking that most of you that are watching this are watching because you have interest in maritime operations and probably don't really care too much about how it takes a video. And not only that, <laughs> it doesn't take much watching to realize that I am no, I'm not an artsy guy or uh, photographer or videographer or anything like that. I just kind of point and shoot. So I'm not going to do a, a, a video on the cameras that I use, but I will tell you about them right now because we are talking about dead space and everybody says they, they want me to leave the cameras running, so if this bores you, you can turn me down. <laughs> but anyway, it's real simple. I basically shoot with four cameras. I, um, right now I'm shooting with three, only because I'm waiting for uh, a package to be delivered, delivered from Amazon for a what they call it, a cage, uh, something that holds one of the cameras that got damaged on the way back from Puerto Rico last hitch. But I have two... Uh, all my cameras are GoPros. I have two Hero 4s, which are very old and the cheap ones, but they seem to work really well. I use I used to use one for the chart plotter and one for the controls. Right now I have that one that I'm using. I'm using it in the back camera for showing the... I'm just kind of watching this guy because I'm expecting this guy to make a turn and I want to turn over this way. But, nope. 
don't see him putting it over there, so I don't know if he's going to go for the buoy or not. Talk to this guy first. Send a million. Chandra B, Elk River. Hey, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'll just stop. Pull it back and let him go by, and then I'll take his turn. Okay. So, I have two uh, Go GoPro Hero 4s. One is not being used right now because I need a new cage, and it's been ordered, we're just waiting for that to show up, and the other is doing the app camera. Then I have a Hero 8 up here that is, shows the front view, and a 360 Max that shows behind me. I'm not using the 360 Max today in the 360 mode, I'm just using it for that. And then um, probably the best pieces of equipment that I have that I'm still learning how to use are the Rode wireless mics and a digital audio recorder. And uh, then when I put it in the software, the software that I use is Power Director. I put it in there and I put one line for the audio tracks, uh, you know, from the digital audio recorder. And then I put the four other lines of video from the four other cameras. The software will sync them up. And then I go and I'll cut and paste them and cut and paste them and kind of jiggle them all around until we uh, get something that works, and that's how that works. All right. All right, so the Chandra B has crossed our bow. I can start applying... I can start applying uh, horsepower again. There's a big ATV in front of us, and uh, yes, you want to run again? the captain on there is a guy I used to work for, and I always remember him because he's one of the few people that I remember the first day that I met. I was a uh, deckhand, and uh, I'd only done a couple of hitches, very, very green, and uh this guy walked in and he had a presence about him that he was a uh, clean cut and kind of looked educated and it turns out he had gone to uh, I forget which school he went to but he, he's been to a very good school Georgetown? Yeah, I think he went to Georgetown Anyway, uh, he came in and he looked at me and he's the captain of this other boat he looked at me and I was just a deckhand he put his hand out, said his name and said, pleased to meet you and uh, I remember that day saying, man, if I'm ever a captain, I hope I'm half as cool as this guy is. <laughs> and uh, it was really cool. We, uh, he's been a, been a fun guy to know for a long year, for many, many years. And uh, now he's, he, we are both at different companies and uh, fun to run into each other. I, I've said this before in other videos. It's a very, very small industry. And... Uh, it's really important not to burn many bridges here because a lot of people that you have de to deal with in the present show up in your future. <laughs> if you have a future. <laughs> so what we're looking at here, immediately to our right, is this big ATB unit that my friend is the captain of. And then straight ahead is this massive ULVC that uh, is the... Uh, or CV, I should say, ULCV, Ultra Large Container Vessel. Um, yeah, and I haven't looked this one up, but I'm pretty sure that one's probably 11, 1200 feet, something like that. So it's probably as big or bigger than an aircraft carrier. And, uh, it'll be probably needing fuel pretty soon. That's where we come into play. So, if you see this, this ATV that's here at anchor right now, he's going to be bow into the current. So what that means is if I don't start aiming towards him, I'm going to fall down on the buoy that's up there right now. 
so I'm going to start coming right all the time because as I come right and I'm pointed forward I'm really getting pushed down with the tide to the left and I don't want to end up on that buoy and it says it seems like it's, it's like it could never happen but according to my predictor line the vector line on my chart plotter I'm even going to miss the buoy on this side of it so <laughs> if I want to get in between the ATB and that buoy I have to really come around now as I straighten the boat out that vector line should start straightening out and uh, look better for us. But it's important, just because you're looking out the window and going straight, you have to be cognizant that your other forces are at play. And the good thing about all this stuff is that you don't have to be a mind reader, you just have to have been around long enough to know. I look at him, he's a great big boat with a huge chain anchor road, and that chain is pretty tight on his bow right now. That means the there's a lot of tide pulling against him. So because of that tide, that means that that's going to be pulling again, that's going to be hitting me broadside and pushing me sideways. So those are all little telltales that tell you these things. There are some people in the, com in the comments that have said that I'm a multitasker, that I can do a lot of things and talk at the same time. And I have to tell you, I always chuckle about that because I am not a multitasker in any sense of the word. In fact, I can't, I can't, if you talk to any of my ex-wives, they'll tell you, I can't even drive a car and hold a conversation. I can do that if we're going somewhere that I know, but if like I'm in traffic or I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where I can go, I cannot try to navigate a car and hold a conversation at the same time. Um, I think you guys say this because you see me talking while I'm running the boat. And that's not so much multitasking as it is just being very comfortable and familiar with what I'm doing. And I've used this, I've used this example a hundred times before, but I think it's very valid, and that's that. If you remember when you, got, when you were first learning how to drive a car, your hands were gripping the wheel, and you were looking over here and looking in the rear view mirror and the side mirror, looking at your speedometer, and you were speeding up and slowing down, you're doing all this stuff. Well, we still do those things after you've been driving for a lifetime. You still do them, but you almost do them in an automatic sense. It goes from being conscious to almost unconscious at that point. Um, and, and, and that's that, that's almost exactly what's happening with me um, going across the harbor. I can talk to you and maybe even sometimes docking. I can talk to you guys um, while I do that. It's not because I'm a multitasker. It's because the task at hand is something that uh, doesn't require as much thought. I'm not saying that you don't have to think about it. I'm saying that it becomes more more automatic. And that's not just me. That's anyone that's done this for a while. So that's how we do this. <laughs> I love it when people say that I'm a multitasker. Because anyone that knows me will know that. Man, I cannot. I can't chew gum and, and uh, ride a bicycle at the same time. <laughs> So now we're lining up on the con hook range, and uh, I was going to show you the range light. The ship just got in the way of it because it's coming right down the range. But if you see that big blue ship up ahead with all the tugboats following it, if you can see they got four tugboats, it <laughs> gives you an idea of how big the ship is. Each one of those tugboats is probably five or 6,000 horsepower, too. <laughs> anyway, on the right-hand side of that ship, as he makes his left-hand turn into the kills, you should start seeing a green light o over another green light. And those are going to be the, the uh, con hook range. The KV buoy is a Raycon buoy that's over to our 
And if you see a buoy that's this one's multicolored, it's red, green, red, and that really means that that you can make a choice there. You can go down the kills, or you can go straight up into uh, towards the battery and ultimately the, the Hudson River. So uh, it's called a Raycon buoy. Now the two different colors don't make it a Raycon. The two different colors say that that's a junction buoy, so that you can go to one side or the other. You have to make a decision. There. Uh, there's something on top of it called a, a Raycon, and uh, what it does is it interrogates the radar so that when your radar spews out its electrical impulses, it grabs that and sends them back in a little different format, which makes like a big explanation point, kind of looks like it, but it'll actually be the, the uh, Morse code of, that, of whatever that buoy is. Uh, designated. So you can see that and it shows up graphically on your radar and they call that a Raycon. We call it the KB buoy because it's the first buoy in the Kill Van Cull. And uh, this is the waterway that goes around Staten Island and it goes all the way over till you get over to about Fort Ivory and uh, the Bothells Bridge and all that and then it becomes the Arthur Kills. I've heard somebody tell me I think somebody corrected me and said that the Arthur Kills actually starts at Shooter's Island, but I, I don't know that for a fact. All I know is that uh, most of us that uh, work here in the city all just refer to the Arthur Kills from the AK Railroad Bridge south. <laughs> and if we haven't covered it 10,000 times before in the comments, <laughs> I would say that people say, why are they called the kills? It's not about killing you. It's because uh, you may have heard that New York, before New York was New York, it was New Amsterdam. And the Dutch, and I should reach out to all of uh, the viewers over there in uh, the Netherlands. Thank you so much. You guys have consistently been for a couple of years now my, my largest group of foreign uh, people watching. Thank you very much for that. Really hoping to get over there to, s to meet up with a whole bunch of you guys. But uh, anyway, the apparently when New York was New Amsterdam, yeah, you have to correct me if I'm wrong about this. But kills, the way I understand it, kills is a Dutch word for uh, waterway. And so you're saying the kill van cull. So it's just Van Cull is, is the name is they're, they're naming this area this waterway after Van Cull, I guess. <laughs> At least that's the way I understand. Okay, so now we're seeing the range lights. And you know what? After I said it, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I think I'm wrong. And I am wrong. You can see the range lights being red and green right on the corner of that ship. And the red one is on the bottom, the green is on the top. And so what that's showing us right now, because they're not lined up together, but they're not stacked, they're at almost a 35 degree angle or so, that means that I am to the, I am north of the channel, of the center of the channel, which is good, because uh, when I'm made up on this side, I can always go that way, it's just harder to come back this way. So, all that's working well. And incidentally, while we're talking about all things Dutch, <laughs> um, I've, I even made a video about people that call Hellgate, Hell's Gate. There's no apostrophe S. And those that think it has something to do with uh, fire and brimstone and damnation and all that, once again, this is a Dutch word for Hellgat, which I guess is, I don't know, maybe a Dutch person can write in there what that means. <laughs> I think, once again, it's a name for a waterway. And, uh, Hell got turned into yeah, hell gate, and uh, it's always easy to know when somebody's uh, full of beans or not. When they tell you, "Oh, I'm the saltiest mariner around. I know New York like the back of my hand. I've been through Hell's Gate a million times." Really? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> You're calling it that. <laughs> So, as requested, I'm letting the kids...
cameras run. You guys wanted long, longer videos. You put all that in about 400 comments, 500 comments since my Tuesday upload, and it's Wednesday today. So I'm trying to let this run, and I really hope the camera I have outside stays together until we get to the dock, because where we're going is usually a pretty tricky place to get into. Uh-oh. Somebody's calling me. Oh, it's another captain. What's going on, Matt? I am. Oh, cool. Is there anybody at E? Alright, cool, cool. Alright, cool, excellent, good deal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah that would be awesome. We're going to be on 77. Thank you, Matt. I, I appreciate it. See you, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Alright, that's great news. Some of you that have been around for a while might remember that uh, we did a video of us going into Newtown Creek, and I don't have uh, recency into Newtown Creek, so I had to take another captain who does have pilotage in there, and uh, that was Captain Matt Bonster. And, uh, that was Matt right there calling me saying, hey, I'm going to help the guy out of number nine, and I will help you in. So I asked him if anybody was at 8, because remember I told you I was concerned that that shortens the thing. He goes, yes, there is somebody in number 8, but it's a very small bar, so it shouldn't be an issue. And having him as a help, as help will just make the job so much easier. So. Always good to have friends. Well, let's... I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys in on a little family secret. I don't think I've ever said this before. It's not a secret. It's just that I don't think I've ever shared this with you before. But my big brother, who is literally a big brother, <laughs> I'm the runt in the family, and he's like six four. He's this big Aryan monster. <laughs> I don't know how. I didn't get any of the Aryan genes. I just got all the Latin genes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, my brother has a, or he, ha I, 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 he had a 1,600-ton master for years. I imagine he still has it. I don't know. But anyway, my brother uh, has spent. Um, he w used to be a commercial fisherman, and then uh, started uh, working in the insurance sector for commercial insurance, marine insurance. But anyway, he, uh, he, being a big brother, he said a lot of things that have have shaped me growing up. But one thing that he has said, uh, I'm going to pull this back because I'm catching up to this big ship way too quickly. I'm going to be on top of them before I know. But anyway, some, uh, uh, a line my brother used to say about things, all things maritime, that I always uh, quote, is he always used to say, out here, we never give anyone a toe. We lend them one. <laughs> I always thought that was good. Well, Matt was a perfect example of that. He had orders to go sail somebody, so he's sailing them, and he could have just gone and left. He knew I was coming in, and he asked if he could help out. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Matt. So this great big behemoth ahead of us, because it's so big, it takes up a lot of real estate making turns. You know, turning twisting through the S turns of the kills and to do that it has to slow down so it was going very quickly and now it's slowing down just so that it can probably have more time to negotiate the turns around the April this right now and so that's what's happening with that and what 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 happens is the longer he takes the l I have 15 minutes until slack water to get to oh That's the guy who's leaving the, the spot that I'm going to. So unfortunately, we are going to uh, be a little late because of this ship ahead of us.
So now as I approach the eight buoy, I've told you in many other videos that I look for the tide to see what's happening on, on the tide. And, and, and <laughs> this is another thing we keep fighting about in the in, in our vernacular, we use the term tide for current. I always have some, what somebody, a, a commenter yesterday called themselves a couch captain, which I, I loved. But I always have some couch captain schooling me that tide is a vertical thing and current is a horizontal thing. One is measured in feet or meters and the other is measured in velocity. And I'm like, you know what? Thank you so much. That's uh, great for you to think that I've spent my life doing a career and I've been wrong about this all the time. So yes, the Elk River. Oh yes I do. I'm going right where you're coming out. Oh. Alright, good deal. Thank you. Yeah, so so So, so those that, sit, that correct me saying that I should be saying current when I really say tide, yes, you're absolutely right. And the, <laughs> the response I use to try to not to get to be too negative is that we also refer to the thing in our basement as a hot water heater. But if it was the water was hot, you wouldn't have to heat it. Or then the old Gallagher line about us parking on the driveway and driving on the free on the drive uh, driving on the parkway. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, we say different things, but uh, that's that's what we mean. So, I am looking at the eight buoy, which is coming up right over here. But more importantly than that, right now, since there's a uh, a barge with a boom around it, I see that the, the barge and the, uh, the the boom is being stretched out ahead. So there's some flood showing over here. So I'm thinking that we might still be we we. I'm thinking that the tide has changed early. It was supposed to change another 12 minutes from now. But uh, it looks like it's already changed early. And we're getting flood. And that means we're probably going to have more flood by the time we get over there. But the reason why I say it's really important to look at buoys and stuff like that is that it's very common that you'll see, especially in the kills, as the tide changes, you'll see on one side will be flooding and the other side will be ebbing. And you say, how can that be? The water, it's just the way the currents go. It doesn't do it forever, yeah, but it happens. So bear with it. <laughs> we can fight about semantics all we want, or we can dock the, dock the barge. Yeah, <laughs> so here's the eight buoy now. And this little teeny tug boat that just went by is uh, kind of, it's quick water disturbed the buoy a little bit, but you can still see on the buoy where there's some flood. That means the water is pushed going the same direction that we are going. So what that means for me is that in, unless we talk about an eddy up there, I should have a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on to keep me away from the barge that I have to get by on the right when I get up to where I'm going. And if the good news is there's a big caisson, and if I get into trouble, it's got rubber on it, so you can lean up against the caisson if you have to, if the tide gets me down there. So what I'll probably do is instead of driving in to the hole, I'll probably go by it, turn up into the tide, and then roll into it that way. So that that's that's what I I always say I'm going to do that stuff, and then I get impatient, and then just drive in, and then I wish that I'd been more patient. So. Maybe today will be the day that I'll do it the right way. <laughs> so I need to slow down a little bit because the guy that is coming out of the place that I'm going into said that he is going to wait for this ship. So if I'm right behind the ship, he won't have any room to get out. Yeah. Yeah. 
and here's Danny. What's up, Danny? Oh, you don't want to go. <laughs> oh, shit. That's all right. Are they out yet? No, he's waiting for the ship. Alright. So, um, uh, Matt Bombster's gonna help us out. Oh, and there is somebody at 8, but it's a little teeny bar. So we're not getting along. Uh, no, no, we will get a line because, uh, the yeah. tide's, the tide's floating, so he might need to hold us off of that case on. And look, if I go up against that case on, it's not the end of the world. It should be all rubber. It, 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 it is, it is, but what I'm gonna try to do is get, the, it's getting longer and longer because we're waiting for him to get out. So, um, I'm gonna to try to go down and turn up into the tide and roll in. Yeah. So, so we probably will get a line from him right at the house. All right. All right. Cool. I might walk up there. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks. All right. A little game plan with uh, Danny who's helping out. It's always nice when you have an engineer that's willing to do more than just engineering stuff. Danny is not that different than many of the engineers out here. Some of the, most of the, I shouldn't say some, I should say most of the best line throwers on the boats are engineers that started out as deckhands. And uh, they're always good because they, they're usually on deck almost as a safety officer watching the deckhands to make sure they don't get into trouble, but also giving them tips on how to throw a line better. Of course, my running joke is that, uh, the only reason I got into the wheelhouse was because I was so terrible on deck. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> I certainly was not known for being the best line and uh, line handler. Okay, now I'm concerned because we've got three different tugs over here all lined up, and the chances of one of them coming out now is very good, and so I don't want to slow down. Too I don't want to slow down too much here because one of them are going to come out and then it will make us even more delayed. So I'm picking it back up a little bit. Said three. There's actually four tugs in here, so I don't know if they're waiting on slack or they just came in. But I need to get by them. <laughs> Now I see some smoke from uh, the second tugboat in line over there. So I don't know if he's just smoking or yeah, it doesn't look like he's flying out. So I have to make sure that he doesn't come flying out into me. So you know what? I think that's the first tugboat. So I think we're fine. We are fine. Okay, so now, now I'm starting to slow down again because remember the energy that I put into the barge I'm going to have to take out later. I'll say that again. Help River. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was going to hold right over here until you came out unless you want me to go by. No, that's fine. 
Yeah, not a problem. I, I figured I'd hang out here. I just wanted to speed her up a little bit so that I, I wouldn't box anybody in over here. Very good, thank you. Okay, Danny, you talking to me? Can you hear me, Danny? Danny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I'm not there. I got ready. All right, cool. Just want to make sure we we're on the same channel. Okay. Are right, you able to get a line there to kind of check us ahead? So now what I'm doing is I'm looking to the hole. You guys probably can't see it because the camera's not that good. You see a little teeny boat coming out right there in front of the red ship. That little teeny boat is going to be crossing the entrance to where we got to go in, and I can see the boom over there from the little barge, and it's pulled over. So that means that we do have a substantial amount of flood going on right now. So that's what, regardless of uh, time or eddies or anything like that, we can see exactly what's happening in real time right now. So I'm trying to slow down all the time, but also rotate left a little bit. So I'm doing a left twist okay, just with more ahead. back. Now I've just gone all stop. But uh, I do that to try to uh, keep us from... We're sliding towards the ship all the time, and that's something I'm trying to avoid. In fact, I'm going to do a little bit more, because I know I'm going to be alongside this red ship pretty soon. Okay, right here is good. Anyway, right here is good. So right now what's going through my mind is that this is probably the hardest part of the job right here. And that's where things are not static. It's not like a car that you can just stop and put in park. You're sliding all over. You have to take into consideration the effects of the wind, and in this case, the tide. And uh, you're waiting for something. And the minutes turn into hours. Not literally, but they feel like it. Because with every passing minute that this guy doesn't get by, I'm getting more and more out of shape. And uh, I'm not going. To have, things are not going the way I want them to right now. So I have to go, and I'm trying to. Uh, I'm getting thrown towards the ship. I'm going to have to start Elk driving. River. Elk River, go ahead. Hey, good morning, Cap. Uh, we all head. Uh, as soon as the Philadelphia comes out of nine, I'm going in. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you on two, Cap. Uh. Okay. Very good. I understand. Okay, so now I've got the bow out. Now I can check the bow up and lift my screen off the ship. Okay, things are looking better. I just want him to back up. You ready? Alright, slide him back. Yes, sir, you'd be okay with me if I uh, hooked the Staten Island side? Yeah, that'd be great. No, I sure appreciate it. I'll, I'll keep it tight on the base. Thank you. I'll do the same on my side. I think so much. That's my favorite as I can. Sure, fine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good, good. You already crossed the flying. Obviously, you can't rush a guy. He's got his job to do. I've got my job to do. He's doing a fine job. He's being safe, doing the right thing. But uh, it's where I'm really wishing I'd get out of there so I can get in. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm waiting. I can't get the bow lines. So when I line on the dock, if I get everything else, but I'm waiting for somebody with the bow lines. Okay, no problem. We'd be waiting too. So, all right, cool, man. We'll uh, once you get out. Yeah, like I said, I just need a guy to throw these two bow lines off. The rest I can get rid of it, and I'll be at peace. I got you, man. Have you uh, called him by any chance? I got you. All right, cool, man. All right, Ross, we'll be waiting too. Man. <laughs> 
now this guy out here, you can see he got his he got out of the hole, got his assist tug on the other side of him to hold him up into the tide and push his bow around. So that assist tug right there is the one that's going to come and help us when he's done over there. And he's pushing him around and the guy in front of me is not backing up all the way because the guy that I was talking to and eventually talked to him said that he's coming the same way in the same direction that I'm coming so they're going to go as far to the left as they can and this guy won't go all the way over there so that they'll all have room. My idea of going past everything and then going up into the tide is looking worse and worse because of the way everything is playing out. He is basically right where I want to be, and I can't ask him to move, so I'm just going to have to work around that. And that's something we could do, especially because before I thought I was going to do this job alone, and now I have a helper vote. So should make things much easier. Now, when they came out of there, they pulled a lot of water because all the water that displays that the barge displaces is being pulled out of there as well. Plus, there's some quick water from the boat that has the barge and from the from the uh, assist boat. But when I look over at the corner, that that boom that I had saw before from showing the flood tide is now up against that other barge. So that might be, a, I'm suspecting that's a result of all the movement that has gone in there because before it was stretched out. Hey, you, you on your Jeff? Yes, sir. Just meet you up inside. Um, you know what? I, I was thinking I was thinking the tide was running harder than it seems to. Maybe that will work. Yeah, go ahead and meet me inside. I was going to put you back here with the line to hold me off, but if I got to, I'll lay on that uh, case on. So, uh, yeah, just back right up. I'll meet you in the hole. Okay. All right. one line right now. That means what they did. Yeah, that's right. I, I think we'll just stick it in there, and uh, if we got to lean up against the case on, we can lean up against it, but hopefully we won't. Yeah, I'm not seeing much current moving this ship or anything, or what I can see, something to push on. It don't look like much. I don't see much of a tail on anything. Yeah, the boom that was going around the barge over at 8 was all stretched out before. Now it's up against the barge, so we're looking better all the time. Okay, so you're, you're not even looking to go ahead and turn around. You're looking to basically just go ahead and here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because cause the Philadelphia is right where I'd be if I was going to turn around, so i got to kind of make this work. Okay, do you, uh, you want me on the port side? Just go with you on the side, and, and you can see, see the barge over here at number eight? Uh, yes, that's exactly right. In fact, I, the, what I can't see is because of their uh, accommodation house there, I can't see that corner. So if you get up there, you know, in the left corner of the barge there, that, that's going to help out. Yeah, yeah, I'll walk, I'll walk you all the way in, even if i got to walk to the third or something close to it where you can see that. But yeah, I'll walk you down. Cool. Yes, sir, okay, so I'm going very slow slowly my mother would say I'm going very slowly right now and uh, the reason being is that I want to be able to get pointed in the right direction get my nose in there and give it some throttle to shoot in past that case on and then once I get in there the helper boat will push us over to the dock and what I have to be cognizant of is that I can get a lot of lateral movement you guys can't see it right now, but my uh, predictor line is kind of pointed almost right down the channel right now. So I can turn to the right all I want, but my movement is still going straight down the channel. So I'm going to get pointed in the direction I want, and then try to get some way going to straighten out our, uh, you know, the more water you get going straight, you'll straighten that predictor line out some more. The right there, it's six. Okay, so we're doing 2.4 knots because I'm impatient. I really should be doing half of that right now, but I'm impatient and I want to go. So that it looks right now that I'm going to hit that 
that uh, barge up there, but I don't think that I am. I think that as I get yeah. there, oh, nope, now my yeah. predictor line is straight ahead of me. So our forward movement has worked. Everything that we want to happen just happened right now, and we are making way right where we're pointed. So I'm going to bring the bow over to the left a little bit to give me some room on that barge. Once I get, see, the problem is once I get my nose in there, I want to turn to the right to get flattened out for the dock. But if I do that, I'll smack the stern of the barge up against that caisson. So it's kind of a balancer hand between the two, you know? Now, like I say, that caisson is covered in rubber, so we should be all right. But it'd be, it would, you know what would be really better than touching the rubber caisson yeah, is not touching it at all. That would be awesome. <laughs> what, man, go ahead and do your thing, and then we'll get out after you. But Tim, you're, you're open up here all the time. You've got plenty of room over here. I'd say at least we go All right, so what I'm concerned about is that when I get in there, I'm going to be coming right, and the stern is going to start heading right for there. Now, the good thing is I'll have an eye on it, but you can count me down, count the stern down as I try to flatten out. Yeah, no, I can get you there. Yeah, that ain't a problem. I'll walk back to Okay, so now that I'm getting out of the traffic scheme, I turn 13 down, so I don't have to listen to that chatter, and I can hear uh, Danny much better. That's Danny the engineer, not Danny the old man. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're doing 3.2 knots. I've gone all stop, and I have to put the rudder hard to the left. And the reason why I have to do that is when you go all stop with a, rudder, with a barge alongside you, the barge wants to come across your bow. So I'm countering that by turning hard to the, to the left, and it's yeah, still big. Okay, uh, now, but, I'm, here, and, uh, but I'm bleeding got speed, speed off all the time. Here, here. You're coming in pretty good. Starting is coming around slowly, but still will bring 60 feet. I'm just walking back with it. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to do a left twist. My rudder is hard over to the left, and I'm, I'm ahead on my starboard engine to the left. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm sliding sideways, and I want to keep that. Yeah, that low, low here on that case. Uh, so he, he says that we, right now I'm, I just want to slow things down, and if I back too hard, it'll slow down, but it'll pull the bow over, over and lift up that uh, stern. So what I need to do is I'm doing my twist again, just to try to stop the slide of the stern sliding over there. I'm down to two knots now, which is good. Okay, I got the case on. You go up in the bow and let me know so I don't hit up there. Thank you so much. Okay, so yeah, that looks like a good 75 or so or more, 100 plus to uh, get to you to the dock up here, right here in the corner. Very good. Okay, so I have about almost 100 feet to go to the end of that caisson. I'm a little concerned about that because... All right. Uh, now we're about 25 feet close and slow. About another 75 ahead before we're up here by the dock. Or 75 close and slow. Well. All right. So I need to get the bow over right now, but in doing that, the stern's going to go, and I'm almost at the spot that I can roll the stern in. Look, you're holding right there on the stern now, about 20 off from that stern, and we're about 50, 50 off and closing here on the dock, closing it shortly. All right, so now it looks like I'm good to go. I just hope that from my angle I'm seeing the right over here. Closing on the stern, I can't tell if you're inside or not, but right here, it looks like you're about 8 off and closing on that case on. Very good. How are we doing on the bow? 45 and close and slow. Nice. All right, so if I would have hit the case on, I would have hit it by now. So I'm just totally fine with that. So I've got the rudder hard over to the right. I'm doing a right we're twist. Right about 40 off. And we're down to 0.9 knots. All right, I'm going to try to start slowing her down. And uh, in doing that, the bow is going to come around to the right, and the stern's going to go to the left, which is everything that we want. And you can't yeah, see it, but my predictor line is aiming this way right now. We want the predictor line to go that way. Very good. Yeah, I'm just 
flattening out. Matt's going to push us right over there once we get flat. Takes him a while to get up there because he doesn't want to slam the barge. He wants to go nice and slow. I'm not doing anything because as he starts to push, that will slow me down. What I have to do, because he doesn't have a line, I can't slow him down. So I need him to push real gentle. Gently, as mom would say. <laughs> All right, now he's, he's doing his thing, which is good. Hey, I think I have to go back. Does that sound right? Yeah, I, I think I have to back up to the spot. Ask Reggie if that's right. I think we're real close right here. Okay, yeah, we will have to back up some. But, uh, I, you know, once you flatten out and get flat, we can slide back. You know, it'll be a lot easier. Starting down for about 40 and closing this down, still out for about 70 and closing. Very good. Okay, now that he's pushing that around, I'm going to twist against him. In other words, to slow him down, I'm going to speed up the stern. Start down for about 35 close about now. I'll stop, Matt. I'll stop. Third down to about 30, closing. Now, now, the, down to 45, closing. now, the reason why I have him go all stop is I don't have a, a line for him to pull closing. against. Third still coming in pretty good. It's pretty now. It's 20, closing. Looks like my bow, my, the 35. camera on the bow just died because of the uh, battery. Third and down to about 15, closing him. All right. I can't see from up here, you know, how much dolphin and stuff you got to see way down there. Uh, stern is down to about eight and closing. You're starting to flatten out now. A little bit cheap, let up on the stern. Bow is down to about 20 and closing. All right. Stern is walking right about eight and closing. Slow bow is down to about 15 and closing. And closing here on the bow. On the hunting creek, once you fetch us up there, you can give me clutch on one. Eight and closing. Alright, I'm 
guys got to get out of here? No, I think, I think we're good for right now. Matt, you sound so different. <laughs> yep, straight line is coming. Coming tight, and we're all good side all the way down. All right, good job, guys. Thank you. Okay, check out the traffic. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River traffic, go ahead. We're all secure here at uh, number nine in the whole of IMDT. Roger, Cap. Check you out. Thank you. All right. They're tying up. We made it here. Everybody's healthy, except for the battery of the camera. <laughs> and uh, so, th th look, we can make these long videos last longer, but that comes at the expense of the quality. I'm shooting it in 4K or maybe even 5, was it 5.4 yeah, or whatever? Yeah, right. Anyway, it's a very good quality for shooting out of the front. The problem yeah, is right. that it uses a lot more battery, so it shut down there. But anyway, thank you so much for sticking with me. Uh, really appreciate you guys watching. If you stay here to the end, wow, I'm amazed. <laughs> right in the comments. Uh, these are super long ones, bad or good. You like them, you don't like them, let me know. I'm working for you. Eh, kind of. I'm really working for the Patrons. If you want to become a member of the Patron team, head over to patreon.com uh, slash C And uh, for a couple bucks a month, you can join the Patron crew and uh, really help out a good cause. And, uh, those guys pay all the bills for everyone else. And I thank you so much. And don't forget to run over to SV Paquita and check out our trip where we're going 1,500 miles from uh, New England over to uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, so I just put, finished putting a one together that uh, is when we start, the weather started getting bad. I don't show a lot of bad weather on this channel, but I can on that one. Come on over. See you there. You guys be safe, stay healthy, and as always, I'll see you on the one.